Hey guys, Chris here, and this is the first of what I'm hoping to become a series of uh, tutorials in, on music production. For this first one, I'm going to talk about programming uh, MIDI drums in your sequencer DAW, uh, specifically when you're uh, working with an acoustic set, so you're basically trying to emulate uh, an actual person sitting on the drum kit and playing those drums. So let's see. I've opened on a blank uh, session in Cubase. In this particular tutorial, I'm going to load my VST uh, of choice, which is BFD3 from F Expansion. What I'm going to talk about applies at least more or less to most VST uh, DRAM modules out there. Let's load a kit. As you can see, it has a visual representation of the kit here. It's a pretty basic kit. Hi-hat, snare, kick, toms on a floor tom, uh, percussion, my, my rides, my crash, and uh, another crash and my hi-hat. Yeah. Okay, let's talk a little bit about setting up the VST in a sensible way so that you, we can uh, do our mixing after we you know, put down the parts. Now, as you can see, uh, BFD3 has a, a, a mixer here. It's actually a very good mixer. If you come here, you can see that there are effects. Uh, here there's a sense module. There are multiple effects that can go in, on each uh, channel you can see here how it's set up it has its sense actually this is a basic uh, overview of the mixer because if I click here the expand button you can see that it has several microphones for the kick three microphones to be exact that are sent into our main kick bus again for the snare and, and so on and so forth for each uh, piece of the kids I'm gonna work with the main ones now I don't need to go into too much detail. The thing is, you can you, you're perfectly uh, fine if you mix within BFD or whatever uh, VST you're using for drums. Most most of them can do a fine job with mixing, and they have several effects. Uh, here we have them split into groups like dynamics, filter, spatial, etc., which are fine. But maybe at some point you want to use you know your own delay or your own like specialized effects, some super weird uh, niche effect that you have and you want to use it, say, just on your ride or just on your uh, snare. To do that, you need to outsource uh, your mixing uh, in your DAW so that you can uh, specifically manipulate that uh, part of the kit without uh, dealing with all the rest. So you, you don't want, you want a delay that is just on the snare automated at specific uh, parts of your song or piece that you're writing. You get the idea. So how are we going to do that? Well, in Cubase, uh, there's a way to activate additional outputs because right now we have just one stereo output for this. So everything I play comes out here. Okay. But I wanted to have it separate. I'm not exactly sure how it's done on other uh, sequencers. Uh, you should RTFM if, you're, uh, if you want to find that out, but um, in Cubase, if you come here, it's a, you can see the tooltip says activate outputs. So if I click, it has one option that says all outputs, which will activate uh, all the outputs at once. As you can see here in BFD, we have eight stereo and then 16 mono uh, buses that can be enabled. So we have our main one and I'm going to activate uh, four additional ones. So we get to five in total and I click somewhere outside that. So where are those outputs? We come here, then show hide automation, click, here they are. Usually what I go for is have my kicks definitely on a separate one, snare, cymbals, toms, and let's say aux for now, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, this, uh, the philosophy behind this is that I've grouped them into parts uh, that have a similar uh, frequency uh, range. So, you know, my kicks are low and I can EQ them in a certain way. Uh, my tom's the same. All my cymbals are, you know, normally towards the high end. And this auxiliary track that we're, I'm going to talk in a minute. So you can see here the mixer at the bottom part of, the, of each track says master. So my kicks are output in the master. So I want my snares to go to the snare. So I'm going here to the stereo because we added stereo buses, if you remember. And it was the second bus that I've named snares. So 
uh, goes to the stair, my hi-hat will go to the third, my floor tom will go to the fourth, mid tom to the fourth as well, high tom again moves to the fourth, etc. Here we have a percussion. Um, for the moment, I'm just going to send it together with the snare. But uh, obviously, if you have stuff like that, you might want to activate an additional output and, and send them separately. It depends on what kind of processing you want to do. And then we have this track here, here that says Amp Mix, the Ambient Mix, which if we expand, you can see that is a lot of mics that have to do with the space. So it's like overhead stuff that are uh, um, surrounding the kit to emulate like a true uh, miking situation in a real kit in a real studio. So this is like the sum of our ambience, the room, so the overheads and stuff like that. So this one is why I've uh, uh, enabled an additional track. So I'm going to send this one there to, the, to five. So let's see, my kick goes to my kick, goes to my ambience, but also goes to my snare. What's that? Well, because BFD3 uh, emulates the leak from one mic to another. So if I'm sitting in a drum kit and I play my kick drum, then the microphone that is on my snare, it will definitely catch a little bit of the sound. So that leak is emulated here. That's, so that's a natural thing. You don't need to do anything about it. Okay, so that's basically how you can uh, outsource, if you will, your mixing of your drum kits into your DAW. One thing that you need to be careful about this is that sometimes uh, presets like that, uh, they might include effects on the master output. Uh, in which case, once you uh, basically bypass master and send your snare into a uh, separate track, etc., then those effects that are within the VST in your master tag would not be applied to the snare. So maybe there's a limiter there, maybe there's a compressor that applies to the whole uh, kit. So you need to be aware that uh, this sort of separation might change your sound a little bit. So you might need to compensate for that either by um, simulating, adding similar effects to it or, you know, lowering your volume or depends. You, you should do a little bit of your homework. It's not, there is no like a one click solution for that. It's just the way it is. Normally, I would uh, talk, go on about inputting MIDI notes, but this has gone already long enough, so I'm going to split it in two videos and stop and record the other one just right after that. So if, you're, if you want to check out how to input uh, as realistic as possible uh, MIDI uh, parts, meet me at the next video. And remember that uh, I'm always doing this uh, without any pants. Bye.